Hi, I'm Jeff Walters, and welcome to The Minutes. And thanks for listening today. It's great to have you along on The Minutes for the week of September the 16th, 2024. This is a City of Thunder Bay podcast. The Minutes takes a look at what happened at Thunder Bay City Council this past week. You can find The Minutes wherever you get your podcasts, including our YouTube channel and our website, thunderbay.ca slash the minutes. If you want to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening at City Hall, just hit that subscribe button. On this episode, we'll have a rundown of what happened at this week's City Council meeting and an interview with Tori Halverson, the manager of Parks and Open Spaces in Thunder Bay. We'll talk about the future of the James Whalen Tugboat and the Kaministiqua River Heritage Park in just a couple of minutes. But first, Council started off with a deputation from the Regional Food Distribution Association this week. The RFDA spoke about an increasing demand for the Thunder Bay Food Banking Network and how the RFDA is trying to meet the challenge of rising demand. The group said that the increase in food bank usage is not sustainable and that changes will be needed in the future. The RFDA distributes food to food banks across the region, as well as supplying meals to soup kitchens and soup fans. They also deliver food to people who are unable to get their own transportation to a food bank. Food bank usage has gone up by a third, and demand for meal programs has gone up by more than half in a couple of years. The RFDA says it is struggling to keep up with its demands and its bills. Potential ways to keep its budget in line include eliminating home food delivery. The group, though, says it is thankful for capital funding it's received from the city to help expand its facility in Thunder Bay. Council dealt with two items arising from closed session on Monday night. One was the ratification of a contract for paramedics with Superior North EMS in the city, represented by Unifor Local 3911. The other item, also dealing with EMS, was to proceed as directed. Also, the Provincial Policy Statement, which is a document produced by the province guiding planning and building and development, was on the agenda. Administration was sent to speak to the new statement. However, that was withdrawn from the agenda at the request of administration. It will come back to Council at a later date. To help build more homes in Thunder Bay, housing grant applications are now available on the city's website. If you're a homeowner looking to add additional units like basement suites or backyard homes, or a developer looking to build multi-unit housing, then these grants are for you. Apply today at buildthunderbay.ca. Council heard on Monday night a recommendation on what to do with the James Whalen tugboat. Discussion was about an hour long on this highly contentious topic. In May of 2022, the vessel, which was moored at the Kaministiqua River Heritage Park, took on water and began to sink. The vessel was lifted out of the river and stored on land near the James Street Swing Bridge since that time. Now, the lease of land where the boat is stored is coming due, and administration recommends dismantling the boat, which is more than a century old, and recycling the majority of it. Administration first proposed preserving the boat's railings, bridge, and stack and create a display at Fisherman's Park. On Monday, after consulting with the Transportation Museum, the suggestion was made that the entire deck of the vessel be preserved, with the remainder of the boat being dismantled and recycled. Once this decision is ratified by Council, a contract for the work will be awarded, with an upset limit of $415,000. The option to preserve only select items is also still a possibility. Administration says a third party has inspected the boat, and while it could be transported to another site, keeping the vessel in the water long term is not recommended. Transporting the tug to another location would be would be in the $700,000 range. Moving the tug to another location and then storing it on land or directly on the shoreline will cost about $1.8 million. Council voted to recycle the boat, which will be dismantled on site, but it's still to be determined how much of the boat will be preserved. There also was a request for an amendment to get rid of all of the boat that was deemed out of order by the clerk as it was contrary to the main motion. The request would have been to dispose of the entire boat and not save any of the items like the stack, bridge, or railings. Now, the report also says there are expressions of interest that should be requested from groups in moving the via rail train from the park to another location. There are issues of vandalism, graffiti, and people getting into the train, and they have made it properly difficult to properly maintain. As well, the park has an encampment nearby, and there are constant maintenance issues. The report notes that changing the park to a more natural state would serve the community in a more meaningful way. We'll hear more about the tugboat, the train, and the park when Corey Halverson, the manager of Parks and Open Spaces, joins me in just a couple of minutes. (music) 
And finally, Council dealt with a number of planning matters on Monday night. A piece of property on North Vickers Street near Bethune Street was rezoned to allow for outdoor storage. The part source location across from the fire hall on Vickers would have outdoor storage as a use on the property, along with the current existing uses. The development would also fall under site plan control, requiring landscaping for the area. Council also approved changes to a lot on Dodd Lake Road. The property owner wants to operate a garage out of their home property. The intention is to serve as agricultural implements and passenger vehicles. Administration was in favour of the request, noting it diversifies the city's economy. Another rezoning was approved on West Arthur Street to allow for a commercial use. The property at Arthur Street West and the former highway would be able to have a health centre or other commercial service use. This would include a convenience store, a hairstylist, a pharmacy or a domestic pet service. Previously, the building had a commercial nature, but was converted into a single detached home about 30 years ago. There are no specific uses proposed for the property and the building at this time. As well, there was one other rezoning application approved on Maple Ward Road. The rezoning will create a new lot for an existing home. Two homes were built on a single lot, and they share a driveway and a well. The rezoning would give each home its own lot. The rezoning was needed to allow the retention of a smaller-than-allowed lot and for creating more than one lot from the original parcel of land. Council approved the rezoning, as was recommended by administration. And that's a wrap as to what happened at Council this week. For more information on anything that happens at Council, please visit our website, thunderbay.ca slash council. There has been a lot of chatter over the past couple years about the future of the James Whalen tugboat. The vessel, which was moored at the Cam River Heritage Park, started to sink just over a couple years ago. It was pulled out of the Kaministiqua River and has been stored on land since that time. Now Council has to make a decision on what to do with the century-old boat. Corey Halverson is the manager of Parks and Open Spaces with the city, and he wrote the report about the James Whalen tugboat, which was presented to Council this week, and he joins me here in the Minute Studio. Corey, thanks for coming in again today. You're very welcome. Yeah, two weeks in a row. That's the first time that's happened, so <laughs> you're saying a trend here. Uh, okay, let's talk about Council last night. Um, the recommendation that you, you had in the report um, was to recycle the James Whalen tugboat. Why was that the recommended option? So... So the original recommendation in the report that was submitted um, included recycling and preservation components. So that that was the recommendation. It was uh, preserve uh, select pieces and recycle what was remaining. That was recommended um, in large part due to the the added complication and cost of of considering moving the tug uh, intact to any other location. Uh, to do that uh, requires a heavy lift barge uh, that has a, you know, a significant cost. So it really did make it challenging to formally consider recommending any other options of, of moving it and having it installed intact. So our recommendation focused in on uh, preserving uh, as much as we could, again, within the, the scope of uh, all of our asset management work. Um, so our original recommendation was a, it was a balance of preserving some pieces um, and recycling the rest. Last night, we also included a, a memo on Monday uh, with an amended me- recommendation that took into consideration uh, essentially a, a, a part B option of, of the same, same concept of preserve and recycle what was remaining uh, in regards to input from the Transportation Museum, who suggested that we could or should explore uh, essentially cutting the entire top deck off, preserving that as a whole, and then recycling the remaining hull. So that was the, the work that went in. That, that was the reason why we delayed the report for one week. Um, we put, our, put some time to, uh, uh, to assess that uh, and consider the potential cost implications of that provisional option. So uh, last night's recommendations included um, essentially a, a, a total contract value uh, to be considered uh, in relation to pursuing that provisional option, uh, which would be preserving the entire deck. And in the end of the day, where did we, where did we land? So uh, council did support the recommendations. So we 
essentially we'll wait for ratification, but we're, we're going to be getting into preparation mode right now uh, to finalize a procurement document uh, to go to market, to have bids submitted to, to, for both options. So the core option of uh, preserving the stack, the bridge, some of the railing, um, essentially that, that was estimated at $290,000. Uh, Twenty to thirty thousand dollars of that was essentially the preservation work, the work required to take those pieces and set them aside, so that we could make a decision in the future whether we're going to restore them and and put them out. But at least we've we've captured them uh, before they're lost through the recycling component. Um, again, that estimate was it was an estimate. So uh, knowing the level of estimate, that cost range uh, was a plus or minus thirty percent. Um, we do have the capital in place to to uh, to fund that, which is why we put the recommendation forward. Um, then the provisional option uh, is for rather than just preserving select pieces, uh, cut off and protect, preserve the entire deck and recycle the remainder. So those would be received as separate prices, and uh, the total upset value that was noted in the memo. Was the was the total contract value that we would go up to uh, in pursuing uh, the uh, the provisional item? So so it, so no final decision has been made yet on essentially what we're going to end up doing. If we're going to have just the the few pieces preserved, or if we're going to cut that deck right off. Exactly, that will come through the procurement process. So now we've got direction to go to market to get prices on the core price of we we need to do uh, we need to essentially resolve uh, the tug it, we're going to we're, we're we've recommended to do um, a hybrid of recycling and preservation that's the core bid um, in addition to that there'll be a provisional bid to preserve and retain the entire deck in both cases those would be put into temporary storage location on city property um, for so that we have them and then we can have future discussions about um, how much we would invest and where we would install them for creation of a display. Yeah, because I believe in the original recommendation, it was mentioned that Fisherman's Park could be a location for, for some of them. Yeah, so the, the core of the report, we, we provided uh, a handful of options and in order to sort of compare apples to apples, each each of the options included the costs to go from beginning to end, including uh, an, the installation, right? So the recommended option that we put forward included uh, the recycling and preservation, as well as the site development and installation. We wanted to identify a, an actual site, which was Fisherman's Park. Um, so that was a, a feasible option, fully in the control of, of parks and, 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 and the city uh, uh, process. Uh, beyond that, the other options were, again, required moving rather than recycle. You're spending the money to move it, and then you had to invest in, in what, whatever uh, those options included. So that's, that's where the apples to apples comparison came from. Now what we're moving forward with is the recommended option, but only essentially the first stage. Two stages. One is recycle and preserve. The second is uh, renew the pieces, um, refurbish them, and have them installed in some shape or form. And until we get our prices uh, from the bid, we're not sure if we're going to be working with select pieces or an entire deck. Yeah, and obviously, uh, I, I'm assuming a bit of a space difference too, if you have select pieces versus the entire deck. Yes, definitely. Uh, and again, I think the the recommended option uh, was much more aligned with what parks typically uh, maintains and administers uh, and is in full control of for passive use in the parks. Um, retaining the entire deck uh, is probably um, more, not more conducive, but uh, would we would be exploring partnership opportunities for the restoration component, uh, possibly for, you know, programming or providing controlled access to it because it's a more substantial uh, asset that you have remaining and it would, it's less uh, less like the individual sort of static uh, monuments that you see throughout 
throughout parks. And, and the one thing I want to mention, it was said in the report, is that uh, like refloating the boat, putting it back in the river and, and keeping it there or, or wherever you would dock it, that's not really an option. It's just not in that sort of shape anymore. So uh, technically you can, you can, we could have pursued all the options that we, we put forward in the report. So you can repair it so that it can be floated temporarily. You can uh, hoist it and barge it to another location to be installed in some shape or form. All of those options were a possibility. Unfortunately, they all included uh, a large uh, a large cost to essentially lift and either place the the vessel on a barge or place it into the into the water to to transport it that way so you no matter what you did you couldn't eliminate that cost it was just the mass of that vessel uh, requires a large a large heavy lift barge and they're expensive yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big job. It's certainly a big job. Uh, something else that is a big piece that was uh, mentioned of the report is the via train. Uh, there's a, there's a paragraph or two in there. So, so what are the plans then for the via train at this point? Yeah. So we want to do an expression of interest, essentially reach out to all the public to understand, uh, what interest there is from the community, either in what they would like to see, uh, happen with it. Um, or I, I have been contacted in the past by interested parties, parties interested in actually obtaining it and restoring it. Uh, so we're going to be open to all all concepts um, uh, with the intention, which we've indicated that uh, for removal from from Cam River Park ultimately. Yeah. So so the goal was to move it move it to somewhere else, at least. Yes. That that's essentially the goal. Um, Again, as the report goes over, uh, based on, you know, it's, it's, it's been a challenge to, to operate and maintain uh, those large heritage assets in, in the park. Uh, with the tugboat not returning, we really do see this as a, as a time and an opportunity to, to move to the next stage with the VIA train as well. And we, we want to be open to all potential options for that, understanding that, uh, again, it's similar to the tug in that very large asset, very unique in its nature and, and the amount of work and effort required to fully restore and or program it. It's not something that is directly in the wheelhouse of parks and open spaces. I, I guess you guys can't go and just turn on the engine and push it down the tracks, right? It doesn't work that way. No, I don't. I, again, I'm not, uh, I don't, we have not gotten into the details on exactly how it would be transported and what condition you know, the, the, the functionality of it is in, in entirely and how that, but that'll, that'll all be part of the, the planning going forward. And how about the park going forward? There's some, there's a paragraph or two again about kind of how Cam River Park is, is going to change in the future. Can you, can you elaborate on that? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, outside of the, uh, the heritage ash that changes, we just I wanted to acknowledge that, um, you know, the park serves, uh, serves a, a purpose to the community just by its general uh, uh, definition, it offers a certain amount of privacy. Uh, it's being used in, in uh, you know, by the uh, unsheltered community. Uh, it has has been in some shape or form for some time, but that's that's accelerated over the last number of years. So um, that seems to be a bit of a default uh, use of the space, and uh, just wanted to acknowledge that. And we'll be we'll be open to. Uh, uh, opportunities to, again, leverage the natural um, features that it provides. Corey, I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in, in what happens to the boat and the train, right? So you don't have any planes though, right? So you need maybe you need a plane to, to, to no, round I it out. we're good. <laughs> You're good. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming in today. You're welcome. Corey Halverson, he is the manager of Parks and Open Spaces here in Thunder Bay, and he joined me today in the Minute Studio. And a big thanks for listening to the Minutes this week. Of course, if you want more information about City Council, agendas, or minutes, visit thunderbay.ca slash council. If you want to listen to past episodes or maybe provide some feedback, visit thunderbay.ca slash the minutes. You can also find the minutes wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, you can find us on YouTube and on our website as well. That's thunderbay.ca slash the minutes. If you want to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening at City Hall, just hit that subscribe button. I'm Jeff Walters. Thanks for listening this week. We'll chat again next week. Make it a great day.